is its many complex hydraulic systems. These high performance systems have a low tolerance for contamination. Any foreign matter, solid or fluid, within the hydraulic fluid. Contamination particles too small to be seen by the naked eye can lead to mission failure, aircraft damage or loss, and the loss of life. This program will discuss the elements of hydraulic fluid contamination control that you, as a maintenance technician, will be involved in. Contamination control within a hydraulic system is achieved through the use of filter assemblies installed in strategic locations throughout the system. There are two basic types of filter elements. The reusable element, which can be removed, flushed clean, and reinstalled, and the disposable element, which is removed and discarded when it becomes contaminated. Hydraulic filters currently used in naval aviation are considered non-cleanable and are normally discarded. Contamination measurement is used to determine the level of contamination in a hydraulic system. The process of contamination measurement begins with the collecting of a representative sample of hydraulic fluid from an aircraft or SC system. This fluid sample is then processed using either the electronic particle counter or the contamination analysis kit to determine the level and type of contamination present in the system. Particle counter such as the HIAC Model 8000 or equivalent is the preferred to be used by all levels of maintenance. Activities that do not have access to a particle counter shall continue to measure hydraulic fluid contamination by patch testing with a contamination analysis kit. The components contained in this kit include the filter holder assembly and syringe, two 500 milliliter bottles for wash and rinse, a Swinex filter holder for the rinse bottle, 24 sample bottles, a 100 milliliter graduate, stainless steel forceps, support screen gasket, 25 milliliter solvent filters, 47 milliliter test filters, Petri slides, and your contamination standards. You'll also need lint-free wiping cloths, waste containers, and a solvent. 680 is the only solvent authorized for use while performing patch tests. Lint-free wiping cloths must be used to lower the risk of introducing external contaminants. Prior to collecting the fluid sample, the filtered solvent dispenser is used to rinse the required number of sample bottles. Sample bottles are rinsed a minimum of three times each. After the bottles have been rinsed, the external threads of the bottles and the internal threads of their caps are washed with filtered solvent. The caps are then replaced on the bottles. Prior to processing, visually inspect the sample for water content. A hazy or pink appearance is an indication that water might be present. Verify by allowing the fluid sample to remain motionless for at least 10 minutes. Water can be recognized by the formation of droplets, usually settling at the bottom of the fluid sample bottle. If water is observed, take another sample from the system to verify the indication and initiate corrective maintenance. Sample analysis is conducted in a clean, well-ventilated environment. Start by assembling the filter holder assembly. Connect tube and adapter to the vacuum part on syringe to the filter holder assembly base. Use the filter solvent to wash down the inside of the stainless steel funnel to flush away any surface contamination. Remove the funnel from the filter holder and install a new 47 millimeter test filter membrane on the filter support screen. Use the forceps provided in the analysis kit. Then place the support screen gasket between the test filter membrane and the stainless steel funnel. Replace the funnel on the holder. Using the filtered solvent dispenser, repeatedly rinse the inside of the graduated cylinder to remove all possible contaminants. Pour out any residual solvent. Measure out approximately 15 milliliters of filtered solvent using the clean graduate. Next, pour it into the funnel to pre-wet the filter membrane. Shake the bottle of sample fluid to distribute its particulate content. Then pour exactly 100 milliliters into the graduated cylinder and discard the remaining sample fluid. 
pour all of the 100 milliliters into the funnel. Using the filtered solvent dispenser, wash down the inside surface of the graduated cylinder with clean solvent until the graduate contains approximately 100 milliliters of fluid. Operate the syringe in a slow pumping manner, drawing a vacuum until sustained filtration of the fluid is indicated by a steady drop of the fluid level in the funnel. As soon as the fluid level has dropped enough to allow the addition of 50 milliliters of solvent, pour half of the contents of the graduated cylinder into the funnel as the filtration continues. If necessary, operate the syringe again to maintain sufficient vacuum for filtration. Carefully observe the filtration process in the funnel. When the fluid level drops to the narrow neck of the funnel, pour the remaining contents of the graduate into the funnel. Pour the contents so as to wash down the inside of the funnel while ensuring that the solvent is not poured directly onto the filter membrane. When filtration is complete, remove the funnel only and inspect the filter surface. If the filter shows a pinkish color, indicating the filter membrane still has a residue of hydraulic fluid, replace the funnel and direct a stream of clean filtered solvent against the walls of the funnel until fluid reaches the top of the tapered portion. Operate the syringe to initiate filtration and allow all of this fluid to pass through the filter. Upon completion of filtration, disassemble the filter holder and remove the support screen gasket and test filter membrane using forceps. Deposit the patch in an uncovered petri slide and allow it to dry thoroughly in still air before putting a cover on it. Visually compare the test filter with the standards provided in the analysis kit. Matching the degree of lightness or darkness will enable you to determine the class level of contamination. The maximum particulate level acceptable for naval aircraft is Navy Standard Class 5 and related SE is Navy Standard Class 3. Visible particles on the test filter membrane sampling technique it will be necessary to collect a new sample and repeat the analysis using extreme care. If the same indication persists, the system shall be rejected. If visible free water is observed on the test filter, you must retest the system. If these water indications persist, the system shall be rejected. Test results obtained by using automatic particle counters and the contamination analysis kit may not always be in precise agreement. Automatic particle counters optically sense particles contained in fluid samples. However, particles smaller than five microns will not affect the particle count. The contamination analysis kit, on the other hand, retains a large percentage of these five micron particles on its test filter membrane. Poor correlation of test results can also be caused by improper sample taking, incorrect particle counter calibration, or faulty test procedures. When conflicting test results occur, the equipment tested shall be considered unacceptable if it fails either test method. Fluid sampling and analysis is an important element of hydraulic contamination control. To ensure accurate test results, fluid samples must be collected and analyzed using the specified procedures.